Tonight is another one of those nights where we have spent considerable time here debating what we're about to show you and why. The story is Syria and the images are awful, but they graphically demonstrate the level of horror to which the conflict there has descended. A conflict the United Nations now says is civil war, but at the same time has refused to intervene. The CBC's Neil MacDonald is following the events in Syria. Neil. Well, Peter, most of the images from Syria today are of mutilated or dead children. And if all that sounds horrifyingly familiar, it's because it is. <laughs> the agony of innocent civilians pours out of Syria in an endless gallery of internet images. It's becoming abundantly clear that Bashar al-Assad's enforcers are taking a ghastly interest in children and not just executing or randomly killing them. Being beaten or being scarred by cigarette bones and whipped with electrical cables. Cases of sexual torture were also recorded against these children. So the torture of children in detention is something quite uh, horrific. In addition, we have uh, evidence of children being used as human shields. In a bus that was carrying military personnel, the children were put up, up against the window uh, so as to protect the bus from being uh, attacked. The UN also said there have been credible reports of rebel field commanders recruiting child soldiers. First-hand evidence of what's happening is limited. UN monitors collect testimony of mass killings but are mostly forced to observe from a distance. We can uh, be sure about a uh, lot of uh, shelling, uh, uh, new, new shelling. <laughs> So, Syrians are reporting on their own uprising, uploading pictures and video. God is great, muttered the man shooting this scene, greater than you, Bashar. But if Syria's civilians are trusting in God, Assad is trusting in Russia. And we are concerned about the latest uh, information we have that there are attack helicopters um, on the way from Russia to Syria, which will escalate uh, the conflict quite dramatically. Still, there's no serious talk of intervention. Syrians are largely on their own, and they know it. What is this? Nobody help uh, us. Why? We are uh, people, not animal. There are several answers to that question. Here is how Hillary Clinton put it. How we can push the Assad regime out. There's no doubt it needs to go, but create a transition that gives at least some possible reassurance uh, to those who fear what comes next. Clinton pointed specifically to Israel. She said what comes next matters drastically to that country, meaning that the Alawites and the Christians who run Syria have kept the border with Israel quiet for nearly 40 years now. And any new regime, Peter, especially a Sunni Muslim regime with a fundamentalist tinge, might not. Neil, I want to go back to the pictures for a moment. We all understand the, the power of an image. We keep saying this video is unsourced, unverified. What right. do we know about the origins of these pictures? Well, we make it clear they're not fully authenticated, but they are supported by independent reports out of Syria, like the one from the UN today. And some of the anguish you hear in those videos would be awfully hard to fake. You know, it's unique. We, the media, have never before had to deal with a closed totalitarian state whose own citizens are sending out video of what's happening to them. Have any of the pictures ever been declared fake? There's been at least one example. A still picture of dozens of corpses wrapped for burial was purported to have come from Syria when, in fact, it was an old photo from Iraq. But I think it's safe to say, Peter, that most of the material or the material has withstood scrutiny. All right. Neil, thanks very much. Neil McDonald for us tonight in Washington.